Hi there everyone, my name is Misty. Welcome to today's video. So for those of you who don't know me, I started a ketogenic diet in March of 2017 at 425 pounds and my lowest recorded weight was last October at 357 pounds and I'm currently at 392 pounds. So I gained some weight and one of the ways, um, one of the reasons why I gained weight is because I was on immune suppression therapy. Um, I have two autoimmune diseases. I have myasthenia gravis, which is one that affects, um, it's basically neurological. It affects the way the muscles and the ner um, nerves talk to one another. And then I've also recently been diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis, which can affect your joints and your organs. So... Um, I was diagnosed with the myasthenia back in 2017, and I started immune suppression therapy back in September of 2017. At that point, I had been on keto for, what, six months, and I had completely gotten myself off of insulin. My blood sugars were controlled, they were controlled through diet, and I stopped taking insulin. And at that point, I was taking 180 units of insulin at night every single day and I was able to stop that. Now, before we go any further, I am not a doctor, I'm not an endocrinologist, you know, I'm not, I, there's no MD after the end of my name. There's an MED, <laughs> I have my master's in education, but I am not a medical doctor. And so anything that I share with you is just my story. You need to really make sure that you're working closely with your medical team to see what's best for you. I would never tell anybody to just stop taking their insulin cold turkey. I'd already talked to my endocrinologist. I have a primary care physician who's literally like not even a block away. So I have a medical team that I keep in contact with on a regular basis. I mean, I basically see my primary care physician about once a month. So anyway, when I went on the mycophenolate, my neurologist mentioned that it takes four to five months, almost up to six months before you start seeing any effects. And whoa, yeah. So in February of 2018, up until that point, again, I'd been diet controlled with my diabetes. My blood sugars were in the low 100s. I was doing really well. And then out of the blue, starting in February of 2018, my blood sugars were elevated. At first, I thought maybe, you know, I was sick or I had an infection. Um, the immune suppression therapy, it, it basically, you know, hinders your immune system. It's, you know, it suppresses it. And that's, you know, during cold and flu season. So I thought it was something like that. I, I didn't think it could be anything that I was eating because at that time I'd basically been carnivore for two months. And carnivore is where you just basically don't eat any, zero, any carbs, it's zero carbs. So fast forward to February of 2019, this past February, it had got, my A1C had gotten way out of control. I mean, I went from controlled to not in control. And my A1C was 10.9 back in February. And my endocrinologist was like, "We, ha you have to go back on insulin. So I did. <laughs> I, um, I started out, I think, 60 uni units of insulin at night. And I ended up um, finding the sweet spot at 100 units of insulin at night. So I take 100 units of what's called MPH or Novolin every night. So there's Lantus, Lavamir, ones that are very, you know, slow reacting, takes about 24 hours to release in your system. And um, then you have Nova Log, which is like immediate within an hour. And then you have MPH, which is kind of in between. It's about a 12 hour insulin. So it'll take about 12 hours for you to see really any difference um, in your blood sugars or it, you know, it lasts for 12 hours in your system. That's probably a better way to think of it. At that time, I was also experiencing really bad nerve pain. Now, I recently just had a laminectomy. Um, that sim those symptoms started in June. Um, I've had symptoms of um, either a pinched nerve or an irritated, irritated nerve in my thoracic spine since January of 2017. So that's an ongoing thing. So my neurologist up uh, my Lyrica, um, dosage, which is a lyric, uh, which is a nerve pain medication. And I went from 150 unit, uh, 150 milligrams a day to 300. Well, at 300, that dosage causes weight gain. <laughs> so, and then in June, 
I um, herniated a disc, one of my discs in my back ruptured, and I basically was immobile for about six weeks. And so all of those things kind of compounded together into about a 50 pound weight gain. Um, and it's been a struggle ever since. So I went into the hospital on October 8th. Well, so, okay, let me back up. So I had my A1C tested in April and it was 8.5 or 8.6, I don't remember. I had it tested at the end of August or September, it was 7.8 and I just had it tested last Friday and it's 7.5. So my A1C is coming back down under control and I'm having numbers in the low 100s. Um, and if, you know, I'll start out the day at like 140 and by the end of the day, I'm right where I need to be. Um, so I have thought about decreasing my insulin dose as we move forward. Um, in October, on October 8th, um, 2019, I had back surgery. I had a laminectomy and another anectomy, um, where they widen the hole where the nerves go through. I don't even remember what that's called, but so I've been recovering from that. Now, while I was in the hospital, I've been doing keto and low carb this whole entire time. I've had a few weeks off here and there, but it's never been something that I'd strayed from very far. Um, but while I was in the hospital, <laughs> Number one, they completely ignored my insulin protocol and went from I went from taking 100 units of insulin to 20 units of insulin. And then I went from basically eating zero carbs, I mean less than 10 carbs a day, to 75 carbs per meal. And they wouldn't allow me to double portion on meat or protein. So anyway, I got all that straightened up. I went from blood sugars in the three and you know high 300s to the low 200s to like three days later at home, I was 108. So I have kept a really close eye on my blood close glucose. And I always have, but it's been even stronger since I've been home because I'm on two different immune suppression therapies. I haven't had my methotrexate since the last week of September because I had stopped that a week before surgery, but I've continued the azathioprine. So when I saw my neurologist back in April or May, I mentioned to her that the mycophenolate was causing hyperglycemia. She didn't believe me, but I showed her the information on the drug website that said this can cause hyperglycemia. And it also can cause type 2 diabetes in people who take it as a transplant rejection drug. It can cause your, you to have issues with your blood sugars. So obviously, I'm not the first person that's ever happened to. So we made the switch then for mycophenolate, which causes hyperglycemia, to azathioprine, which doesn't seem to have that um, reaction or side effect. So I've done really well since then with keeping my blood sugars low and keeping them under control. Now, if you don't know anything else about diabetes or if you do know anything about diabetes, any increase in your blood sugar can cause an infection and an, and an increase in, and an infection can cause <laughs> increased blood sugar levels. So I was freaking out that my blood sugars were running so high while I was in the hospital because it's like I'm already at a risk of infection because of the immune suppression therapy and the chemo drug I was on. And it's like, you guys are keeping my blood sugars in the 300. So I was, I've been completely freaked out. And the first, one of the first signs that you can know that your body is finding an infection is like I said, if you have elevated blood glucose levels. So I've literally been testing I do a fasting number before and after every meal and then one before I go to bed. My poor arm, and I test on my arm, my poor arm is about to die. So anyway, so that all leads me to one of my meals a couple of weeks ago. And I honestly think I had prosciutto and a Diet Dr. Pepper. I mean, I had something that has never in the past raised my blood sugar level. And I'll have to pop up the picture because I posted it on Instagram and I can't remember the difference, but I want to say it was like a 50 or 60 point jump. And that is a lot for something that's supposed to be low, low carb, right? So when I posted that on Instagram and Facebook, a lot of people were speculating that it was the type of sweetener because I believe that Dr. Pepper is sweetened with aspartame. Um, so people were, you know, that, or it was the, um, caramel coloring. So I did what I normally do. 
and I decided to do a test. So I had my husband <laughs> purchase all of the sodas, diet sodas that I drink if I'm drinking diet soda. So I had him get Diet Dr. Pepper, I had um, Diet a and Sprite Zero, Coke Zero, um, Diet Pepsi, Diet Sunkissed, I think that's all. I think that's all of them. I already have Canada Dry here. So I think that's all of them. So what I would do is I would take my fasting number in the morning and then without having anything else to eat or drink, I would drink whatever soda it was. And then I would test an hour and then I would test it two, two hours after. The only two that gave me issue were Diet Dr. Pepper and Diet a and If you've ever had Diet Dr. Pepper or Diet a and you know that they taste seriously sweet. Um, they are so much sweeter to the taste buds than any of the other sodas. I didn't have any issues with Sprite Zero. I didn't have any issues with Coke Zero. I didn't have any issues with Diet Pepsi. Um, Coke Zero, I believe, is the only one out of that group that's sweetened with sucralose rather than aspartame. Um, but I didn't have any issues with Diet Pepsi, and Diet Pepsi is brown and sweeter with aspartame. Like, I wasn't having any other issues but I was only having issues with the um, Diet a and w and the Diet Dr. Pepper. So a lot of people, I don't think, realize this, but anytime you have something that tastes sweet, even if it's low carb, even if it's marketed as zero sugar, if it, if it tastes sweet, that can cause your body to have a reaction. You can have an insulin reaction to something that just tastes sweet. That's why like fiber syrups, which are completely low carb, can raise your blood sugar. Um, that's why maltitol, which is low carb, can raise your blood sugar and it's just like eating regular sugar. And that's because your body has the same response and not everybody's body, let me preface this by saying not everybody's body, but my body for sure. And so many of you guys have said the same thing. When my body detects something sweet that I've ingested, whether it's a low carb sweet or a regular sugar sweet, my body has the exact same reaction. So my insulin was spiking or my glucose was spiking and causing issues because of the sweetness level of those two sodas. So what does that mean for you? <laughs> so many of you mentioned in the comments on that post, um, on either post, because I also posted about the Diet a and in on the Facebook, on my Facebook page, that you've had similar issues and you've been wondering why, you know, you've eaten something that's considered keto or considered carnivore that's low carb and all of a sudden you're, you know, experiencing blood glucose strikes. And I would encourage you, if you have a meter, to test for yourself. So, and I know there are gonna be some people in the comments that are gonna be like, you should give up diet soda anyway, it's poison. Lots of things are poison. And listen here, <laughs> I already gave up carbohydrates. Like I've eliminated carbohydrates from my diet. You can take my diet soda and my cheese out of my cold dead hands, okay? Okay, <laughs> not really. I've been trying to get off soda. But a lot of people suggested stevia and sparkling water, and that's the same thing. It's like if, I, if it tastes sweet, if it has a sweetness factor, then it's going to raise my blood glucose level. There's going to be an insulin response, an insulin spike. So at the end of the day, only you can determine whether or not diet sodas are going to fit into your keto diet. If you aren't diabetic and you're not worried about your insulin or your blood glucose, then you don't really have to worry about it. It's really going to be up to you. But if you are someone who is interested or you've yourself noticed that you're having issues with some diet sodas, really take a minute and like, are, do they taste sweet? You know, it's a Diet Dr. Pepper, Diet Root Beer, um, Diet Cream Soda, anything that tastes sweet. Because to me... Coke Zero, Diet Pepsi, um, Sprite Zero, those, they don't taste very sweet to me. 
Diet Dr. Pepper and Diet A&W have always tasted really sweet to me. And even in their non-diet forms, Dr. Pepper is very, very sweet to my taste buds. So I just wanted to put that out there and kind of share that information. Sometimes I think it's really interesting is, you know, to hear how other people's bodies are affected by what we ingest in the low carb things. If you're really interested in um, kind of like a, a sweetener, I know um, Matt and Mega from Keto Connect did um, where they tested low carb sweeteners. Wes from Highfalutin Low Carb did like a whole week of low carb sweeteners or he tested low carb sweeteners with table sugar and there are a few that he got the exact same response in his blood glucose levels even though they are low carb. So you just really, it really is just dependent upon your body, your physiology, how your body reacts. And like I said, not everybody may have that kind of reaction to those types of, um, you know, kind of sweet tasting items. But if you're someone who's noticing that you're having soda and your blood glucose is elevated, then I would really encourage you to do some testing and check it out. Um, the same kind of goes for candy. I, if I'm gonna, so, I should really make this a separate video, but let's just talk about it right now since we are. There are keto police who are gonna go, mah, mah, mah. if I've always said, and I've said this since like my third month on keto, if you need a piece of sugar-free candy in your day to keep you from binging or completely going off plan, then you should indulge in that piece of candy. I have said that from the very get-go. I. I think the keto, keto police can go shove it because what anybody else's opinion about what I put in my mouth, it doesn't matter to me. I know my body, I know what it needs, and I also know my psychology and I know my mental state and I know there are just some days where I just want a candy bar or some chocolate or you know just something, I just need something sweet. So if you are that type of person and you need, you know, something little to get you through the end of the day, then please, by all means, do that. But please note that there are a couple of sugar alcohols that affect you just the same as table sugar would. And one of those is maltitol. And maltitol is in a ton of of sugar-free candy. It's in Brussels Stovers, it's in Hershey bars, it's in Reese's Cups, it's in the Atkins bars, it's in so many sugar-free things. And I have completely taken maltitol out of my system. Number one, it's a diuretic. <laughs> not a diuretic, that's not the word, right word. It'll give you the poops. <laughs> but number two, I have the exact same reaction to maltitol that I do to table sugar. I mean, I just kind of don't even have either. I stick with um, lilies, which is sweetened with erythritol and stevia. Excuse me. So it's just one of those things where you have to make the judgment call for yourself. If you are diabetic, I would, like I said, I encourage you to test. Encourage you to test. You know, be wary of fiber syrup. That's like I had to switch from my pancake syrup to the Walden Farms pancake syrup because the one I was using was basically a fiber syrup and it was just, my blood sugars were in the 200s when I used it and I haven't had any issues with the Walden Farms syrup. So it's really about being your own kind of scientist. You kind of just have to, you know, test and see what's going on and you may have to eliminate that from your diet or just have it every once in a while, you know, something again if you need to keep you from preferred you know, prevent you from going off plan, prevent you from binging, those kinds of things. So yeah, so that's kind of what had happened with me and the sugar freeze or diet sodas. Um, and like I mentioned, it doesn't matter if it's Zevia, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter what it is or what sweetener it's used with. If it tastes sweet, then unfortunately I'm going to have issues with it so and that's that's just the way it is I mean I it sucks but at least I still have diet Pepsi in my life and I've rediscovered my love of cherry coke zero or coke zero sugar whatever they're calling it now but again completely up to you test drink only water if you want to most of the time most of the time I drink club so this club soda sparkling water it's the same thing 
carbonated water and I will put a water enhancer in it. I really, really love the strawberry watermelon one from Walmart. It's the greater value brand. Uh, so I think it's strawberry kiwi, kiwi watermelon. The one from Stevia, and not Stevia. Sweet Leaf Stevia, which the, that is my favorite Stevia ever. But I normally go through, I don't know, four of these a day, four or five of these a day, because I drink water nonstop. Uh, but yeah, I normally will drink this, unless um, sometimes this bothers my um, system. So I'll move to regular, you know, just water out of the refrigerator, tap water. But yeah, but every once in a while, I want a soda. Like, yeah, if you're the type of person who can be 100% clean 100% of the time, more power to you, honey. <laughs> I cannot, but yeah. So it's just one of, like I said, it's just one of the tools that I'm using to help me get to a point where I can get back off insulin and get back to hopefully losing weight and get my diabetes under control with, um, without medication, with diet. So yeah. So that's it for me today, guys. Thank you so much for joining me. I really do appreciate you. You can see a little Kikatos up here in the, in the, um, on top of the entertainment center. She's sleeping. But yeah, so that's it, guys. Thank you so much for joining me. If you have any questions, leave them down below. If you have any other topics you would like me to cover, leave them down below. Or if you are interested in something else that you want me to test or that I have tested, let me know. Let me know if you have the same issues with diet soda. I would love to hear from you and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.